We operate from a belief structure and we operate from our own problems right here. And we project. The reason why I have problems is because of Debbie, Christina, and Dan. So where's the power at? Anytime Debbie, Christina, or Dan shows up, guess who has a problem? I do. Who has power over me? They do. Because they operate from a different idea, a different structure. Because, see, when you came into this world, you're just a little bitty baby, aren't you? And, of course, this little bitty baby who's, who's dropped into this world, into this, this scenario, this, this whole environment, they have to survive. They have to. That means if mom and dad had problems, if they had emotional issues, if they were whatever's going on in that environment, this little baby picks up ideas and emotion events and they deal with it. They cope with it. They survive. Isn't that true? I mean, that's just how it works. And then this little child will grow up and then continue to grow up and they operate from this viewpoint. What's the viewpoint? The viewpoint is they are doing it to me. That is one model of the world. Now, this is what happens. Most people never grow out of that model of thinking. Now, all spiritual teachers, Jesus included, I'm sure Buddha and any other spiritual teacher, they will tell you the problem is inside you. There are two basic models of the world. One model of the world, again, mom, dad, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, TV, school teachers, everywhere you go, they are impacting you. And as a child, you're going to take all whatever comes in and you're going to deal with it. You're going to handle it the only way you know how. Isn't that true? You, you take a child, for example, and, and they're in an environment. Uh, let's say mom's a, a prostitute, dad's a drunk, uh, his brothers and sisters are all angry and upset, and you're the last of the Mohicans, right? Now, there are, it's not very safe for you, because why? Brothers and sisters are angry, they have all these issues, and guess what you will do? You will survive this environment, won't you? That means uh, when, when you're 12 years old or 9 years old or 7 years old, let's say you're abused, and this happens oftentimes, abused by mom's one of her boyfriends or whatever, or, they, or she's put on the street, this little girl or this little boy will take what comes into their life and do the best they can. But then they grow up. They grow up and then they wonder why they're living on the streets and they're drug addicts or they've been in prison or barely, nearly killed or whatever. And they will think, I'm screwed up. Now, had they not experienced those experiences and they experienced a family who's loving and kind and they, they spent time with them and they took them to ball practices and they played dolls with them and they did all this stuff, the same child will act and perform differently, wouldn't they? So the belief is, my belief is, is that there are no broken people. Everybody will take whatever goes in and do the best they can. But here's the real problem. We often begin to believe and think all the stuff in here is real, permanent, unchanging. And this is who we are. Now, unfortunately, we often build that around bad experiences. We usually don't go to all the good, wonderful experiences and say, I'm a great this, or I'm a great this, I'm wonderful, loving. They only go to the ones that what? Hurt. Isn't that right? And of course, if it hurts, what are we going to do with it? Put it right back here on the shelf, and we just want to keep it in the sacred holy place because if we ever go there, it's going to torment us, it's going to hurt. And so it sits in the back room. Well, those are programs. And of course, those programs will pop in at the least unlikely places. Driving down the street, a song on the radio will play and you start to feel this. Or a character, or a situation, or a smell, or an emotion, or something. All of a sudden, you begin to act and perform. By the way, these are all relationships. And this is how we operate. So. This model of the world, when we operate this way, I'm allergic, I have no control, the boss, my wife, my ex-husband, my current husband is controlling me, and therefore there's nothing I can do about it. When you live in this lifestyle, live in this belief structure, where's the power? Not in here. Isn't that true? Okay. <clears throat>
Now we're going to take this same model, same exact event, same exact person, same everything. There's two models of the world. And what we want to do is figure out which model of the world we want to be in. And the only way you change is to change how you see it. Okay, now this is the one we're talking about. All these experiences come in and, it, and they just abide within you and you operate from this. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this one down here. This is the lower way of thinking. This is what most people act, believe, and perform. But there's a higher way of thinking. Yes, all this stuff does come in. That's true. We all have bad experiences. We all have good experiences. We all experience stuff. But the higher level thinking is that Again, it's maybe something inside me is holding on to this, and it's a, my reaction to them. May, you know, it's, I find it amazing that, <clears throat> you know, I work with an individual who has um, a severe phobia. I mean, this phobia is so bad that if I were, and this is the truth, too, I w if I were to say spiders, I mean, she would just break up and just start bawling and screaming and just, I mean, it was just huge. And she's in my office, and I reach over to grab the tissue for her because she's bawling. And she's jumped, thought I was reaching for a spider. <laughs> okay? And so this is huge, right? And, and by the way, in my room, there are no spiders. Okay? Who is creating this? Is it the spider, or is it what's inside? The spider within. It's the, absolutely, the spider within us. Okay, so here it is. She experienced a spider, but the information went inside. And she began to operate from it. And the belief system built around it by experiences. And all of a sudden, she's in my office, and I'm just talking with just words. And inside of herself, she begins to create by going back to the shelf in her mind with the memories, the emotions. And then all of a sudden, she's acting and performing. So she's, but then again, she's still blaming what? The spider, which there are no spiders in my office. Does that make sense? And so what I discovered is, and NLP is a modeling uh, program, basically understanding what you do inside your mind. And so inside yourself, She's not realizing this, but inside of herself, she has pictures or images. So images and pictures and the information goes inside your brain. And then also with those images and pictures, there may be sounds, which is, could be internal dialogue, could be something somebody said. And then also inside of herself, there are feelings. Now, guys, feelings is the major, major driver in your life. And I want to help you understand that because... Without the feelings, if you go to the pictures and the sounds and there are no feelings, guess what it means? Nothing. That's the key. All right? And then also inside yourself, I believe you have what I call programs. All right? Now, if all this stuff occurs inside yourself, but you're not consciously aware of what goes on, you come in and I say spider or I say your husband or your ex-husband's name or this event and you begin to feel and produce this, you're still going to blame who? Them. But it's everywhere you go, isn't it? Isn't that true? So where is the power now? It's inside you. All right? If the law of attraction is true, whatever you hold to be true inside you, you attract and bring into your life, what happens? You get your fears. Isn't that true? Inside of herself or yourself, whoever creates this, they carry this everywhere you go. When you begin to discover you create this, it's your feelings, it's your emotions, and you do it all yourself, then if you figure out how to change what? Change the pictures, change the sounds, change the feelings, which is the major driving force in your world, and learn new programs. So I believe that in order to have a problem, you got to be good at it. Does that make sense? That means, I mean, you could be sitting right here listening to me and you could be having a problem. And nobody knows but you what you're doing. And sometimes you don't even know what you're doing.